Hallelujah. Yes, God, welcome. I want to welcome everyone once again. This is your host, Prophetess Dr. Christine Sigi. Welcome you from Overcome as Deliverance and Healing Ministry. I have a subject here I prepare to share with you, and the, the topic is called Prophetic Declaration Prayer Against Disrespect and Despise 2017. You have to declare a declaration, prophetic declaration, prayer against disrespect and despise. 2017, it is a here that you do not let anybody disrespect you or despise you. You have to put them, you have to, to, to put them a place. You have to put anybody who disrespect you or despise you, you have to put them a place. We are going to declare this that no one will disrespect you or despise you. They say some, some, some evil, some wicked, that they don't recognize you. They don't, they, even if you do anything good, they don't, they don't want to see it. They are like that. They will never respect you. They will never, they, they never see you with anything. They just despise you. Amen. Disregarding Amen. you, disregarding you. Amen. Yeah, so you have to put a stop. 2017 is a year that you will be respected. You will move forward. Amen. Anybody who disrespect Amen. you, it is a easy problem because you will declare, you will speak prophetically. You declare declaration, a war against your enemy, against anybody who raise up to disrespect you, to despise you. You are not going to allow anybody yeah. like that in your life. <laughs> that's that's yeah. why that's why you are going to declare like that. So I pray that God will protect you. No one will disrespect you. No children of the wickedness will waste you. You are you have been wasted. Enough is enough. You have been wasted because you didn't know. Now you know. Since you know this. You will not let any child of any children of the wickedness to waste you, to despise you, to disrespect you. You never, you don't have to let them to to do that. Enough is enough, and you have to put a stop. We are going to look in the scripture whereby a, a giant disrespected a, a man of God, and they just treated a man like garbage. But the man of God told him, "Not me." Not me. I'm going to kill you. You will not survive. I will kill you completely. <laughs> you will never be, live in this world. <laughs> I will kill you physically, not even spiritually. <laughs> he refused. He said, no way. You cannot disrespect me and then you leave. You, will, you are going to kill every satanic giant that has been assigned to, to respect you, to despise you. You will put a stop. Amen. You will put a big stop. Let's look in the book of 1 Samuel 17, verse 42. 1 Samuel 17, verse 42. Dr. Rind, please, can you read for us? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is so good. I love God. Because he has to put some, place, some people in their place. Yes, thank you. Hallelujah. First Samuel 17, verse 42 to 50. That, this is a good one. You have to stop enemies. Anyone that look at you, think that you, you are nothing. You have to put a stop, and they will run a lesson. The next generation, they will never touch your family again. You have been disrespected, despised. Enough is enough. You, it cannot continue like that. You have to move from the tail to the head. Amen. 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 Go ahead, sister. First Samuel, first Samuel 17, verse 42. Yes. And when the Philistines looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and good looking. Yes. He so did he what? They say, what did they, what, which word did you use? He did what? He disdained him. He disdained him, which means despise or disguide. Amen. 
despised him. He despised him. He looked David over and saw that he was little more than a boy growing with the healthy and handsome. You, you know, he looked at David and he looked at David and said, this is a young boy who is growing. It's just, it's nothing. He disrespect him. He despised him. He looked at David and he said, no, this is nothing. Go ahead, sister. Verse 42. So the 43. Yeah, 43. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his God. Yes. Now, this Philistine, the giant, the Goliath, he, he told David, Am I a dog? You are coming to me with a stick. David said, Yes, you are a dog. Because you are nothing, I'm not going to take a gun to come for you or any harm. Yeah, that is the declaration. You see, now this 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 person he despised, he disrespected David David until he's, he's just calling himself a my dog. Yes, he is 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 finishing himself. You provoke the enemy until the enemy will reduce himself to nothing. He call who call him a dog? He call himself a dog. Yes, he's a dog. <laughs> you see, now because he call him am I a dog? So yes, he's a dog. So you call your enemies. Anybody who disrespect you is a dog. It's not an. Uh, it's not a human being. He's a dog. That is how you declare a war like that. Now, the Bible says he cast David with their gods. He started using witchcraft. He uses witchcraft to cast David. But there would be no witchcraft. No witchcraft would despise you. Would disrespect you and leave. They will never, they have disrespect you, they have done everything before you didn't know this, but now there is no way they will come to you again. They will use their gods, they will use their witchcraft, but the witchcraft will not catch you. Then nothing will work for them. They will come to you, they will, they will do everything to bring you down, to do what they have been using, they used to do before, it is not going to work. Any witchcraft. We is going to, to use witchcraft to curse you. It is not going to work for them. That's how it is. Yeah. It is not going to work with them. Anybody, you know this Goliath cursed David by using his God. He uses his God because he, he understood, he, he, he knows that he, their God is a big God. He will, he, will, he will destroy David. Now, verse 44, my sister. Verse 44. Yes. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. You know, all these, all the curses, this giant was talking about David. David was just shaking his head, saying, Oh, oh you think you can do that? You think you can do that? Let me respond to you to know that I am a child of God. You know the enemy, for sure, they have really disrespect you. They have done damage to your life. They have they have make you cry. They have make you. They have they have disgraced you. They have uh, uh, shame you. They have done everything, everything, but not now. 2017. It this will be a year that no demon, no powers from the pit of hell that will touch you in Jesus' name. It is up to you. If you give yourself to the demons, it is up to you. But if you declare a war. A declaration you refuse nobody i want i thank you dinda dr linda i congratulate you because you started when you didn't want anybody to disrespect you when you went to that meeting you told them you are going to resign congratulations i i was very happy about that i was really happy that's that's, that's how you can handle the enemy that's how you deal with them that's how you you don't care you don't have to, lo to, to go down to the enemies who's sitting on you, who disrespect you, does not recognize you. And with all your degree, PhD, but still they, they think that you have nothing you can say, you can contribute. And, may, and those people, maybe they, haven't, they don't have what you have. You cannot allow them. No, they don't. Yes, I know, they don't have. That's why they were fighting you. They don't have. That's why they, they were afraid of, uh, of you. Yeah. That's how, that's how you deal with, that's how you handle them. 
Now, David, he said that I'm going to give you, I'm going to give your friends to the birds and the, the wild animals. Who? You cannot do that. All oh, that is dead. He is, he, I will destroy you. You cannot destroy me. Now, look at what David responded to, to this giant, Goliath. Go ahead, sister. Verse 45. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with the sword, with the spear, and with the javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Yes. You know, David told the Philistine, the giant, you, you are only fresh. You know the witchcraft they use fresh. Those evil people who disrespect you, who they, 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 they despise you, they are using fresh. Because a man of God, a woman of God, a godly person does not have those things. Those, the anybody who, who disrespect people, who uh, despise people, they are using fresh. So, you will say them like what I, I Linda, I'm going to give you example throughout this 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 message. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes, my sister. You know when when you declare, you tell them, I know whom I serve. I know I know who I am. Yeah, I'm not going to allow you to to to, to treat me like this. Yeah. So Amen. because you have a God and everything backfire. They end up giving you giving you a position to take up. Now they, they end up listening to you. They end up telling you to talk to them and they are ready to listen. Before they didn't want to listen. Mm -hmm. if, if you did not mm -hmm. go with them aggression, aggressive and refuse, they could, you could, they could not allow you to talk. Amen. Yes, they Amen. could have not. That's true. Now, when you, anybody defile you, defile means make you dirty divine means that you are you are dirty they make the mm -hmm. he make the god of israel to look like his garbage is rubbish mm -hmm. he make god of israel to be like little is not god this man Koraya the giant that, now you know those those people they can make your god to look like you have, you don't have god you are, you are not serving god that's what they they, yeah. they treat you like. They look at you. They say, "What what kind of God are you having?" You you they just yeah. disrespect you. Yeah, I know a man. I I have given you example before. This man is wealthy, is rich, but he is is suffering with cancer and he was working with the cane because cancer is affecting him so much. He told me that it is me who need God. He doesn't need my God. I said, "What? You are dying. Look at yourself." I'm healthy, I don't have problem. But you, the same God that you are saying you, you I need it is the same one who can heal you. Because doctors cannot heal cancer. They can help you to die quickly. It has defeated them. They are trying, but they cannot help you. Now your stage is going. You next time they will put you in bed and that is it. They will give you two two weeks to live. But the God I have it will heal your cancer. Now, any time when you see enemy disrespect your God, defiling your God, make your God to look rubbish, you rest up against that person. Now, look at that. Verse 46, my sister. Verse 46. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth. Yes. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Yes, yes. That is exactly you declare. You will command the devil, the demon, anybody who is disrespecting you, despise you, that today, this day, 2017, is a here. Anyone that standing, that you want to disrespect me, despise me, they will suffer and die in the name of Jesus. Now, David told, told, told that man, the man who despised David, who looked at David like David is nothing, he called himself a dog. Now David is telling him, I'm going to kill you. I'm not going to leave you. I will kill you. You will die. Every yeah. enemy, every enemy that is disrespect you, that is despise you, you will die in Jesus' name. 
David told the man, I'm going to kill you and give you a fresh to the parts of the world, to the parts and animals of the world, so that people will know there is God in Israel. Yeah, you have a God. You have a living God. You have Jehovah God. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our Father who lives in heaven. We have Jesus. We don't want the children of the devil to, uh, to manipulate us and sit on us and, and control us. You don't need that. You cannot cry because of a child of the devil is mistreating you. No way. The Bible has declared. No way. They cannot waste you, waste you anymore in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. They cannot. When you declare like that, they, they have no power. You know, he, he, he declared. He, they, you know, Goliath is the one who, who said that he would give David his, his fresh to the parts of the air. David said, no, it is me I'm going to do it for you. Not me, not you, because you are a child of the devil. Amen. A child of the devil does not have power, does not have authority. You have been given power to cast it them, to cast them out. You don't have you, you don't have to let any child of the devil to manipulate you to control you. In the mighty name of Jesus. You declare. Ah, uh, look at verse 48. Verse 48. Skip, skip 47. Okay, 40, 40, okay. You go on 47, yes. 47. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear. Mm -hmm. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Yes. Yes. The Lord, the world will know that you are saved, you are upon again. The world will know, the neighbors, people will know. When they have been despising you, disrespect you, they will know that God saved you and God is God in you. When you refuse, when you, you say no one will disrespect him, you, I, you will, I will destroy you in the name of Jesus. Yeah? So now, the Bible says, Amen. That the God is the war. God is the man of war. He will fight for you. In fact, God will fight for you. Amen. He's the one who will go ahead and fight for you. You are not going to fight. Everything is for God. It's Him who is going to fight for you. You, you, when you see something like that, don't sit down and start crying and think of what to do. You become very bitter. You, that's when you you continue praying. Even if you are down, continue praying from down there. And trust that God will fight for you. Don't let the enemy, don't let the child of the devil to defeat you. And you will never be defeated in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, go ahead. Verse 48. So it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to, it, to meet David, that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Yes. Now, this is what it, it is. Now the Philistine, that is Goliath, moved close to attack David. He moved close to attack. Now it, it, the hunger is so hard. But when he moved close to attack David, he was, not, he was just, just moving because he knew with his heart that I'm going to crush this boy. I'm going to kill him. I don't need even to use his strength. This is a young kid who is growing. I'm going to break her into pieces. I'm going to break him into pieces. It's just nothing. Do you know some people, they, they, they treat you like that? Do you know that some people, they, they mistreat you and treat and take it that, that your God is nothing? They don't even recognize. Even if you say something about God, they will just uh, feel like you, are, you, are, you, are, you put a, uh, a ash on, on his face. You put a shit on his face. They feel so bad. Yeah. Now, when this man moved closer to attack him, then what happened? David ran to him. David ran to him. You run to your enemy. You don't have to fear the enemy. You run to him. You run to the enemy and confront the enemy. Rebuke the enemies. Curse the enemy. Command them to be destroyed. And the Bible says, David ran quickly towards the, 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 the battle, ran to meet him. David ran and meet him. You know, this is the man, when he was running, when he was coming to cross, people were running away. So he ran, to, he, he moved close to David so that David can run away. Then he can say, ha ha, I'm going to have defeated him. So 
he, David ran to him. When he moved close, David went, ran 100, 100 meters to him. Do you know really how people run very fast? <laughs> That's what I see David run. David runs with a high speed, with his strength in the hand, and he strapped him. Yes, go ahead, sister. Verse 49. Then David put his hand in his back and took out a stone. And he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead, so that the stone sank into his forehead, and he fell on his face to the earth. Okay, 50. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, and struck the Philistine and killed him. Yes. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Amen. You are your child. Anybody who is despising you, you will kill him. They are going to die. They are going to die. They are going to die in the name of Jesus. Now, Amen. David strike him only with a stone, with a syringe. He strike him down and they died and they killed him. You will kill anybody. Anybody that is despising you will die. 2017, it is a year. Anyone who is racing up against you, wherever he is, he will die. He's not going to live. He will die physical death or spiritual death. Because this, this, this is too much. You have been suffered enough. You have been, you have been, you have been, go, you have been going through, uh, through so difficult because you didn't know. You didn't know that the child, the Goliath, the, how he has been taking time. He has been sitting on you. He has been to torturing you. He has been manipulating you. has been to torturing you up to this time. But now the time is up. Their time is up. Their time is finished. They have no time again to touch you. You didn't know, but now you know. You will kill them by the strange. You will kill them by the stone. You have the hand. In the name of Jesus, they will die. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone yeah. that is raising up against your family, against your children, to despise you, to disrespect you, they will not live. They will die in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's look on another scripture. Yeah. We are going to, you know, I'm, I want to show you how to deal with these powers of, of disrespect and, and the respect. Disrespect and despise. Let's look in the book, another scripture here. From the book of First Kings, 17 8 to 24 this one it is very hot it is very 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 hot let's go if you feel like you want to sleep you feel tired go and get a drink come back don't sleep don't bring destruction because we are seriously want to declare to do some declaration right now hallelujah praise be the name of jesus First, first Kings 17, 8 to 24. Yes. First Kings 8, First Kings 17, first 8 to 24. First Kings 17, verse 8. To 24, the yes. the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and to dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Mm -hmm. Now, the word of God, the, the, the Lord said to Elijah, the word of God came to him, to Elijah. He, he told him to go to Salavat, to live there, and he has instructed a widow there to feed him. Here is a widow, here is a prophet of God, and God has sent the, the, the man to go and live with the widow. Now look, look what is going to happen. Go ahead. Verse 10. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, he did a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. Now when he, when he arrived there, he saw the woman correcting stick. Because they didn't have gas like now. Here we have gas. <laughs> we don't correct the stick. So the stick, the fire good, they were the, the, the gas of those days. Now the, the woman was busy correcting, thinking how, how she's going to live. Because she didn't have anything. And then the man of God told, told him that, uh, please give me a little water in a cup. 
as and, and then uh the bible says the woman look at the man and they saw this man i think is a man of god why is he asking me water go ahead my sister verse 11 and as she was going to get it called to her and said please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand okay now not only water the man of god wants also something to eat food because <laughs> there's a problem so the man of god told that told the woman woman bring me also uh, something to eat hallelujah praise be the name of jesus thank you jesus we thank you lord hallelujah hallelujah praise be the name of jesus you are so good god we love you jesus we love you god thank you father. thank you jesus thank you father now what happened what did verse 12 can you say can you read verse 12 so she said as the lord your god lives i do not have bread only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar and see i'm gathering a cup of sticks that I may go in and prepare for myself and my son that we may eat and die. Now, look at that. The woman it, it, told, it said the truth what is happening because there was famine. There was nothing in those in the country. People were dying. Even some of them were eating their own children. They didn't have anything. Now, she had only little flour and oil and she believes that after that they would die. They didn't have anything. And this is the food the man of God wants, wants the woman to prepare for him eat. Then the, what does the Bible say? Continue. Verse 13. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. Now, the, the man of God, Elijah, uh, 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 told the woman, don't fear. There is nothing. Don't fear. Do go and prepare food for me. I need food. I'm hungry. I need to eat. And and afterward, prepare for your son. Now the woman calculating and saying, this is very little. It cannot be be enough, both of us, four, four, three of us. If I cook for this man, a man of God, and, and, and what am I going to cook for the food? But anyway, let me cook for him. Let me pro let me prepare for him. And what else? What did the Bible says? Go ahead, sister. Verse fourteen. For thus says the Lord of Israel, the, the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry, until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. Yeah, amen. Now. The Elijah released the blessings of uh, 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 the, to the woman and said, "You it would never cease that flour and oil. It would never cease. It would be there until the rain would come. So the poverty of that woman ceased. The woman started getting rich because she was selling the oils. She was selling the flour, and the woman feel good. And but remember, this man he was living with he, with her in the house." So they had enough food, they were eating, they were happy, they were enjoying, and they were feeling good. And here, what does the Bible say? Amen. Amen. What does the Bible say? Verse 15. Yes. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she and he and her household ate for many days. Okay. Now you see the poverty after Elijah has gone. She and the household eat. They continue eating. They were happy. They were celebrating. They didn't. They didn't hear. They didn't. Uh, they didn't feel any famine. They didn't feel any poverty. They didn't. All the poverty. Everything went. Yes. Now continue, sister. Amen. Verse sixteen. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry. Yes. According to the word of the Lord. We spoke by Elijah. Amen. Elijah told them the food, the miracle, whatever, it will never cease. It will never finish. It will be there forever until the rain starts raining. According to this word, you know, the woman has seen the word of Elijah. They are enjoying. They are happy eating. And they have seen everything is going well. 
he has trusted she has trusted the man of god and everything was fine now 17 please verse 17 now it happened after these things that the son of the woman who owned the house became sick and his sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him now here is a problem here is now when you see disrespect and 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 and, and, and despise something happened later late the woman's son became sick he grew worse and worse and finally he died the the sickness continue becoming worse and worse and the, the son died the, the, this is the i think that was the, that was the only son because the husband died and they were left because the woman said it, uh, this food the, the little oil and the and the flour le left it's for me and my son which means there were only two and and now this son has died Elijah still is living in our house. Now go ahead. Verse 18. Uh, verse, verse 18. So she said to Elijah, What have I to do with you, O men of God? Have you come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? You listen, listen now. He said that he's, he, Elijah is the one who killed his son now. He went there. He was very angry with Elijah. He was very, she was very angry. You know, you know how you are angry and bitter and, and saying that you kill my son. What, how did Elijah kill his son? Her son. Look at that. Look at respect all, all what the good Elijah has done. Everything Elijah has done to her. Now the woman is turning against Elijah. You see? <laughs> Look at that. You see, after the, the woman has done, the Elijah, the man of God, has done everything God, they were happy. They didn't feel anything. Something has happened. And it happened. How, how did this man kill her son? That is all the, the goodness, all the, the things that Elijah did to this woman. The woman did not look at it. She, she went and went to, to fight Elijah. Uh, Elijah. Elijah said, said, Okay, woman, you have said I've killed your child, but the God I serve, I'm not going to take disgrace and despise. I'm not going to take shame and disgrace. How can even the world hear this and say, I live with you here. I'm a prophet of God, and the child has died. Yeah, how how is it one? Because it would be known, and it, it is definitely it, the the conspiracy and everything they would be against me. Elijah went to God. You see, that's why no matter the situation is, don't allow anybody to despise you, disrespect you. Amen. Don't allow anybody. This was a very serious case. The child was sick, was sick, was sick until the child died. Now when the child died, a woman went, 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 went to the man of God and complaining and cast. That was disrespecting the way he attacked the man of God. That was not nice. That was not kind. That was so rude. That was bad. Yeah. Now, continue a woman of God. Verse 19. And he said to her, give me your son. So he took him out of her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his own bed. You know, the, the boy was dead, was completely dead. They took the, now, now Elijah said, give me that body of the boy. The, and then uh, the woman gave, gave Elijah the boy and the boy took him to the, his room where he was living, upper room. You know, they, they were building a house and the upper room. Elijah went there and he prayed. He said, no, 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 I'm not going to take this disgrace and respect now. I'm not going to take this God. What happened? He prayed. The Bible says, verse 20. Then he cried out to the Lord and said, Oh, Lord, my God, have you also brought tra tragedy on the widow with whom I lodged by killing his son? 
Now, God, Elijah is praying. God is saying, don't kill the son because I, 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 you brought me here. You didn't brought me here for this son to die. You killed the son because that God was to protect the boy. God was, was is the one who, who told uh, Elijah to go to this woman. Now something has happened. So because uh, uh, Elijah didn't want to be, be blamed, he blamed God now. He told God, God, it is you. So God says, okay, I know what I'm going to do. Okay, verse 21. And he stretched himself out on the child three times and cried out to the Lord and said, Oh Lord, my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back to him. Yes. Now Elijah humbled himself and started talking nice to God and says, God, please let this child live, return his life. Yeah? Because before Elijah, Feel, feel also bitter, feel bad. He said, God, you can't kill a child. But again, when Elijah realized that hunger is not going to bring this child back, he prayed softly now. He's asking God kindly, please. Yeah? He, because God is the owner who has the breed. Now, now look at that. Go ahead, my sister. Verse 22. Then the Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the soul of the child came back to him. Yes. He the Lord is going to hear your voice. The Lord is going to hear your voice. And everything that the enemy has done to you, disrespect and, and disgrace, this God is going to take care. You will never be respect, disrespected and despised. God is going to take care of you. Because now, God had the voice of Elijah. And what God did, God, what did God do? Go ahead, sister. And Elijah, at verse 23, and Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper room into the house and gave him to his mother. And Elijah said, see, your son lives. Yes, amen. You will live. Anything that wants to bring disrespect and, and disrespect and disrespect, it will be destroyed and it is be, 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 be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, all disgrace went back to the woman. Yeah? All shame because she was bitter, she was angry, she was crying and speaking and cursing for no reason. She did she, 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 she not go to the man of, uh, of God and tell the man of God, this is what happened. But she was bitter. Now when the child was given to her, she was she was like she can't say anything. Elijah has to fly and get out from her house and go. Because the way she attacked Elijah, Elijah did not expect that the woman can attack her like that. That is exactly what the enemy will do to you. Don't allow enemy to attack you, to disrespect you. Don't allow anybody to disrespect you and despise you. Refuse in Jesus' name. Declare, like you have seen these two examples, Goliath disrespect and dis disrespect and despise uh, David, but David killed him. And also this woman, after the, the Elijah done everything good to her, again something happened, she framed David, she framed Elijah. Now that is what it happened. Now, as you declare this declaration, you command every power, anywhere, anywhere, wants to disrespect me and, and despise me, let them die. Let them die. Let them die in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the disgrace and the disrespect go back to the sender and let them be disrespected and be, be despised themselves in Jesus' name. You, you, you refuse to allow any anything, any satanic angel, any satanic people, any wicked, children of the wicked, to despise you and waste you in Jesus' name. You declare like, like this, you declare, you child of the devil, programmed by Satan to come and despise me and disrespect me, you are a liar. You are a liar. I destroy you. I destroy you in Jesus' name. You will not defeat me. You will not respect me. You will not despise me. I have refused in Jesus' name. I have refused in Jesus' name. Wherever you are, you will not reach me because I will run to you and kill you in Jesus' name. 
You declare like that. Amen. You declare that I will kill you wherever you come. <laughs> that's what that's what what happened. If David did not declare, he, he prophesies another way. He provides he prophesies prophetically pro declaration. That's what David did. And you also declare like Amen. that. When Elijah went to upper room, he declared too also. He said, God return this the life of this child three times. So you declare and you declare, you declare prophetically. No one, no one would disrespect me and, and despise me and leave. That is that is sentences. If you allow them, they will bring you down and, and it will be going to pass your generation to generation. To save your generation, you have to stand firm and declare and nobody will disrespect you and it will be like that. You know some people, there's some family who are permanently disrespected and despised no matter what you do no matter what you do you look at what the elijah did the elijah did the good did very good did, did everything according to god but here is this woman when something happened the woman didn't see anything elijah did to her she didn't see that milk that that that, that flour and oil that she, she didn't see anything you know that some people when they disrespect you, they don't want to say yes. They don't want to, they, when they see ye, yes or when they, they recognize you, they may think that, that you will get the glory. So they want all the glory to go to themselves. I have seen people, because of my background, because of what I am, or because I don't know how to talk properly, they, I, they come to me, I pray for them, they get the miracle. Instead of giving testimony, say Christine prayed for me, they go to another church and do, to go and give the testimony there to glorify, to glorify themselves. And I, I the, instead instead of saying mentioning of Akamas, mentioning Christine, it, it, it they they can't they can't, yeah, they can't say that you prayed for me through you God has done to me, but because of they are so bright, they are they are they are they are despising they are despising. But remember, the devil has not gone to hell. Day. It will go for them. Amen. Yes. Amen. When you, you I, I, and I say, okay, I know people, they can mean to disrespect you and despise you. No, that, that is okay. But you will refuse. You will refuse. You say, okay, you have decided like that. But in the name of Jesus, I refuse. That is you who have decided like that. And the power that God has given me, it is there. It has not, you have not taken them. Even if you go to glorify the devil, I don't care. What I know that I will not respect me. You will not, I will not allow you. No matter where you are living. Some people, they will just come to you. When they look at you, they want something, then they run away. They don't, they don't want, even they can't tell anybody. They can't tell anybody that these things I got from so and so. Because they don't like that. They, they 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 see that like you are nothing. Amen. They see like you are. You, oh, where did you? How did, they want like it is them. But unfortunately, it is you. Like Doctor Rindi, she was the one who knows what she's doing. These people they didn't know anything. They respect her and they, and despise her. But at the end of the day, they didn't have anything. So they had to tell her, please talk to us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus, you are so good. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I bless you. I give you all the glory. You paralyze and you address the enemy properly. You declare a, 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 you are, you declare a war prophetically addressing the enemy, addressing the, the devil to tell them that I am not going to allow you to despise me and disgrace you, to disgrace me. I am declaring to you that you are a liar. You are a liar. Don't 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 de depress yourself. At the workplace, when your boss is rising up, abusing you, started started making noise or accusing you, you declare against her, against them. Prophetically, it said 2017 is a year. I have declared no one will disrespect me and and despise me will go free. No matter what the person is. No matter, I don't care. No matter who you are, I've declared and I declared in the name of Jesus. That's how you will do it. We will be declaring every day, every day until 2017 when we finish. 
you will see, you will come up, 2017, your head will be big, your mouth will be big, you will feel like you want to fly because you will be empowered by God, that no one will, will again bring you down. You are a child of God. You don't have to let anybody to, to look be, down you. I, I will share with you the, the, some very powerful scripture which will empower you to put a stop and a place to the enemies that will rest against you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. See you tomorrow. No, no, tomorrow we don't have any prayer. We will have prayer on Saturday morning, 8, 9 o'clock, 9, 9 p.m. Eastern time, 9 p.m. So tomorrow there is no prayer. It except if you can, if you are in Brampton, Ontario, Canada, you can come for prayer meeting at our prayer meeting, uh, seven seven p.m. But if you, if not, we don't have any prayer tomorrow. So you have a break. Go and enjoy yourself. Go and buy yourself something. Go and drink your coffee and meet your friends. We don't have any prayers tomorrow. And then and then, uh, we have tomorrow. Uh, that is uh, Saturday, 9, 9 a.m. That's when we have prayers. You come, we'll continue with this declaration, prophetic declaration, in the name of Jesus. Thank you very much. This is your host, Prophetess Dr. Christine Isiki, saying bye-bye. I love you so much, and there's nothing I can do about it. Go to our website, www.overcomersdh ministries.brogspot.ca go and donate go to overcomers pay, uh, paypal email and donate an amount if this press is uh, is blessing you give a donation go and give offering give your ties and offering and call me i will pray with you i will i will i will present your gift to the throne i will take it to the altar and i will pray god will bless you uh, our number to call is 905-792-3798. Or you can reach us. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of Jesus. 647-608-5207. We have so many numbers, so you can't miss any of, the, uh, any of them. You can go also our landline, 905-487-7196. Some people... They, 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 they say the number is not working, but I, I know they don't call the right number. Go and see, sow a seed. Go and sow a seed. You need to sow a seed to the place where, where you can be blessed. You have been sowing a seed in the wrong soil, and now you have financial problem. If you need God to, 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 to attack the enemies of your finances, go and sow your seed to our ministry. I will, I will present your seed. To the, to the altar, and I will pray God to open more windows and doors of heaven. Our sister, Matan, was blessed. She was, she is now very happy. She got more hours and she's going to get a, a permanent job soon because she started giving her tithes and offering. That is the same. All of you, you have seen what God has done to your life. I want to thank you so much. God bless you. See you on Saturday. 9 a.m. God bless you. Once again, I love you so much and there's nothing I can